Hey folks, I'm going to continue my look at uh, Galsiv 4. This is just like a first look video, so uh, it's not going to be a full series, but I just want to kind of get a little bit further into the game and just see how, you know, how it was playing compared to Galactic Civilizations 3. Okay, um, we were we were looking at this anomaly in the last turn. Um, the anomalies now, you need a couple of turns to actually look at them, uh, to examine them, whereas before they were just kind of picked up immediately. Here we go. Our survey ship cautiously exploits the... It approaches the mysterious object, all sensors set to maximum gain. One of the universe's many secrets, great danger or valuable treasure will soon be revealed to us. Okay. Okay, we should consider colonizing Slepper 1. Yeah, we're, we're going to do that. Don't worry, advisor. Okay. Getting these tutorials still. Uh, yeah, we've got a colony ship coming soon. I think what we're going to do is we're going to rush it if we can. You know, it'd be 85 credits, yeah. So, um, I was you really want to rush stuff at the start of the game, from what I remember. So, I was kind of a little bit slow off the mark there. Uh, let's get the uh, let's get the TAS discovery getting further into this around this star. Okay, well, look at this. We found some more Promethean, and we got Slep here four and five. Okay, so this is a class two poor planet. So we've got two class 2 pores next to the class 1, uh, 27, sorry, <laughs> amazing. Okay. There is a Diablo Catalyst in the capsule, a rare ship upgrade that increases the weapon firing rate of the ship that it's upgraded with. What are your orders? Uh, bring the Di Diablo Catalyst on board. Disassemble the Diablo Catalyst for its valuable components, or we can sell it. Um, Illyrium and Antimatter, let's just sell it, we'll get some, we'll get some treasury. Because I don't need that on, on a... Exploration ship, I don't think. Okay, so we do need to get some colonists on this ship. This is a colony ship. Um, <clears throat> probably one with low expectations, don't we? So they're a little kind of happy early on. Okay, there we go. Let's get this ship over to Slip here one. It's going to take a few turns to get over there. I've got an idle ship shot idle shipyard now so I think we're gonna send out another probe okay we're gonna advance the turn okay okay we found slep here too uh, so there's a whole bunch of planets around here these are all these uh, these are all gonna be like kind of sub colonies I guess to slep here one um, this is uh, yeah, class one, class one. So they're all class two and class one planets around here. Let's just see what we've got over this way. Okay, we've researched space elevators. Elon's lift. <laughs> okay. This is a, a, a one per galaxy galactic improvement. We've got a space elevator supply module. All right. And we can also, this is leading to Xeno manufacturing. It looks like some of the, a lot of the technology names are taken straight out of Galsiv 3. Okay, yeah, we've already seen this. Um, we'll probably go with arm shuttles now so we can get the uh, warships. Okay. Hold on a minute. Where did you come from? Yeah, this thing's still set to explore, I think. Yeah, it should be set to exploring. Uh, this one wants to be... I think we'll go head to, down towards this uh, this planet now here. Or this star here. Okay, we've got a colony ships moving over there to uh, Slepper 1. Now, is there anything we need to attend to? Um, let's have a look. No, we're still building this trade network. Now, can you rush build? Yes, you can. Let's rush build the trade network, because that's it's probably worth the credits, because we'll, we'll eventually recoup it with the extra trade income that we're going to be getting. All right, we've got an idle core world. Okay, so yeah, now we need to look at building something else. Okay, so we can build the industrial center. Now this gives us plus three to manufacturing. And this, we can put some other manufacturing buildings in, in these particular locations here. Alternatively, we could put it up here... Uh, yeah, I mean, we could put one here plus one. That's going to be plus three, but with only one connection. Um, that'd be plus one, and we could potentially get like plus two, plus three, plus four if we put it here. That's going to be better for research. Uh, hmm. 
Beam four. Yeah, we get four bonus here. Yeah, I mean, if we if we if we really wanted to max out manufacturing on Earth, we could put it here in Africa here, and then you know we could build a bunch of manufacturing buildings around. Um, let's put the industrial center here. We'll just put it here, and we'll build something next to it. I'm not I'm not going for crazy min maxing in this game. It's just just wanted to have a quick look at it. Okay, I've got enough culture points. Okay, minus 15% decay from colonies if we go for independence. We've also got liberty, self-governance. Plus 8 approval on all core worlds except your home world and a free leader. Um, yeah, so we could we, we can just ignore those for the time being. We'll see what we need um, as the time comes. Oh, okay, so we found the uh, Altarians. And we need to research uh, Universal Translator. Huh? Okay, so that's something we probably want to get researching as soon as possible. Um, we're getting arm shuttles next. Got another event. Uh, what are your... Yeah, so it's asking if, if we want to develop universal translation technology. So we'll come back to it shortly. And we, yeah, we're gonna, uh, con we want to get Slepper 1. Okay, so in Galsiv, every time you colonize a planet, you'll get this kind of event. And this gives you, you know, gives you an opportunity to kind of further customize the planet in the way that you want. So we've been able to use the ancient precursor factory to increase our manufacturing output. Uh, what do we want to do here? Yeah, we don't want to increase pollution anymore, although that would be crazy pollution. Crazy manufacturing, sorry. Uh, let's go for the infrastructure. Okay, arm shuttles. So yeah, we've got it. We can unlock a whole bunch of stuff, including some uh, some different types of ships. Some weapon types, and it opens up research paths, you know, into new technology, uh, new weapon types. Okay, I think we want to go for, where are we? Universal Translator. It's going to take us 13 turns, though. But yeah, I think we probably need to get that, so that we can talk to the Altarians. Now, where did we see them? Ah, there they are, look. All right, so we've actually got some neighbours who are potentially going to be friendly, and we, it's good that we got Slepper 1 before, well, while we got the opportunity, because uh, the Altarians would definitely have taken that otherwise. Okay, and um, we've now got a Guardianship too. What we'll probably do... Uh, let's just keep that at Earth, I think. We've also got a Star Eagle. Uh, we'll take that one, Slepper 1. Okay. Now, we want to turn this into a... Where are we into it? We want to assign a governor here. Now I'm trying to remember, let me just go back into the leaders and just see which ones are which. Yeah, a governor, a governor of a manufacturing base worlds want a high. Yeah, this guy's gonna be the one, isn't he? Yeah, because uh, it's they want high diligence. And he's also got seven in social as well. Okay, right, so let's get Sauron May doing it. <laughs> Sauron May. Um, so, yeah, Sauron May, here we go. Recruit and assign. All right, so now we can actually control this planet ourselves. So, Core World Capital provides the basic needs of a Core World. Okay, so we probably want to get this one up first. Um, now, this gives an adjacency bonus level of 1 to everything. Ah, now this might be good luck. Uh, increased... Wait a minute, where is the... Is this the base city, I guess? Bum, 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 bum. I guess so. Prime approval, planetary defense. Where does it tell us our citizens? Okay, here we are. So, yeah, these guys are... The, the taxes are too high. Our population capacity, we are unprotected. So I think we need to get a city up. I don't think we can build one of those yet. So we probably want to get the, uh, core, the we, this core world thing up straight away. Um, yeah, we'll probably put it here, I guess. Because we want to put a city, a new city here. Ah, Planetfall, here we go. 
That just gives you a plus one to all. Um... Yeah, let's put let's put it where, where it is here on Planet Four. Now, do you want to build a uh, shipyard yet? I guess so. Uh, no, let's not do that yet. Supply depot streamlines the distribution of goods and supplies to residents, improving productivity and comfort. Okay, this is going to further raise uh, manufacturing and approval. Uh, we've got the colonial generator. This is going to give us manufacturing and malevolence. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Uh, then we've got Garrison. That gives us military. I think... Uh, we probably want to get the supply depot up first, I would have thought, to increase approval. Yeah, plus one to uh, manufacturing and one to military. Okay. So we could put the manufacturing up here. Uh, that's manufacturing and military as well. Manufacturing plus one. Okay. Yeah, let's get it here. So... Sorry, we want the colonial generator. Supply depot. There we go. All right, let's get that one up. All right, we should colonize. Uh, we should consider colonizing Algeneb Four. That's this one here. Okay. So wow, there's another Class Thirty Six planet. That's really really nice. We've got to get there though before. Uh, this is going to be difficult because we don't have that many population now on um, on Earth. So we've got to we've got to find a way of like rushing population. Now we could use this executive order look, which will give us an immediate. Where are we? Yeah, draft colonists. This will provide a free colony ship, but we won't have anyone to populate um, it. Now, that might it might be worth getting this planet as quickly as we can before the Altarians get there. Um, I might actually do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That's uh, that's like a good thing to do. Yep. Okay, let's get this one out. Now, have we got colonists here? Yeah, we've got citizens on it. So let's get these guys out to Aganeb 4 here. Hopefully we can get there before the Altarians. I would even consider attacking the Altarians over that, <laughs> to be honest. Because getting a getting a decent, you know, planet like that, and especially in a small sector here, might be a good idea. Okay, there's an idle shipyard at Earth. Um, yeah, let's get the supply ship up. Now this, well, maybe another constructor. Uh, the supply ship basically give, builds, gives you re, uh, manufacturing points for one of your new colonies. It's a really cool little mechanic that they added in Galsiv 3. Uh, where is our colony ship, by the way? Sorry, our constructor ship. Flagship, colony ship. Oh, I thought I built a constructor. Oh, there we go. The constructor's in Earth. Oh, that was dumb. So let's let's get this out. Come on. Oh, okay, so you've got a load of citizens, have you? Uh, okay. I didn't realise that these also had to have colonists. That's in that's an interesting choice. So now basically your stations are going to have to have colonists attached too. I think we should go for the Ascension Crystals, probably a, a good bet. Uh, so let's go and let's go and get that out. Come on. Yeah, that's it. Out you come. Event. A new group of weapon enthusiasts on Earth are beginning to become a problem. Um, okay. Okay, so there's a militant group. Are the Warforged movement to take root, root on Earth? If we use force, it's not something to be proud of putting into this movement. Um, plus 10% approval. The Warforged is a movement that some of your citizens follow. They believe that war is inevitable and our place in the galaxy will be, be determined by success in the battlefield. Boosting your favour with them will increase the approval 
of your citizens that follow uh, that follow them. Um, that does sound like a battle mode thing to have. Go on then. <laughs> I like war. War is why I play these games. Okay, and we got another probe. Uh, I think we're gonna put the probe on explore. So we'll just auto explore the rest of the galaxy. Okay, gonna advance the turn. All right, we found the Iconian refuge. Oh, look at those guys. They look so cool, man. But we can't talk to them yet because we don't have the universal translator. Okay, the TAS Discovery here. We're going to put this thing on survey now, I think. Actually, no, before we do that. Okay, for, never mind. We'll just get it. We'll just get it uh, getting the anomalies because the, the anomalies are good anyway. Okay. Send the TAS Discovery. Yeah, okay, we're already doing that. Now we are going up in money, so I think this must be because of the difficulty level. The uh, it, we're not, I don't, I'm not having the sort of economic issues that I tend to have in Galsiv. Uh, let's go and get this thing going for the artifact here. And what have we? What else have we got down here? Ah, oh, look. So these guys are going to colonize this planet before us. Ah, oh, that's a shame. In fact, they've got there already. Look. Dang it. Alright, so let's see if we can find somewhere else to colonize. We'll go to... Should be a planet screen. Uh, I guess we get them on Slepper. Uh, maybe one of these ones here. Okay, that's going to give us extra food. It's going to give us pollution. Let's go and get this one here at Slepper 5. I think that's going to be the... That's a shame we missed that other planet, but you know... Fortunately, we can we can always go to war with the Iconians, and that might be a good idea to get an early planet like that. Artemis. Yeah, look, these are all pretty. We haven't found any other good planets. That was a, it's a shame that they got they got that to that one first. Um, and what I like about this game is it makes it difficult for you to just to to take planets off people early. It's it's not that easy. I think I don't know how you actually invade in this one, but at least in Galsiv Three, you had these kind of troop transport ships okay should we get yeah let's construct the star base here in fact can we get one that will be closest to Durantium? probably maybe if we get one we should be able to get it between two cosmic pioneers civilizations with the most colonized world okay so the altarians look, they're, look like they're doing okay there right we can get this one up so let's go to construct star base and Oh, okay, so the communication star base uh, extends your cultural influence and its assets and collects nearby strategic resources. I'm assuming that that also means the Ascension Crystal. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the mining. Yeah, look at this. I tell you, right, I think Stardock punch above their weight when it comes to you know the size of their studio and the fact that they're how good everything looks they're just a really really they they've really really knocked it out of the park with this one man i gotta tell you our people have built a permanent structure in space before but nothing like this okay so this is telling me we've got our first star base up now uh available targets is the ascension crystal so we can get a xeno archaeology lab or mining drones okay we want the ascension crystal here Let's see if we, yeah we can also build a star base module now each one of these is going to cost money and um allow you know the amount of modules you can get so we're going to research more modules later on but now we are starting to get the ascension points and they should start popping up here next turn i think so yeah we'll, we'll grab those ascension crystals okay we've got an idle core world what have we got we got the garrison or we got the warforge foundry provide starting experience to ships built at this planet shipyard that's pretty cool now obviously this is going to make the warforged a little bit more powerful um so what do we got here plus two level to military in the industrial center that might be good that's 51 turns though maybe if we put the uh, garrison up here um it's a long time it's a lot of turns i think maybe if we put the garrison up first and what I'll do is I'll put it here, and then we'll put the we'll put the uh, 
the Warforged factory in between these two, I think. Probably how we're going to do it. But we'll get the bonuses from this straight away. Alright. Check the next turn. Let's have a look at the galaxy overall. Oh, sorry, this sector overall, I should say. Because this is just, remember, this is just one sector of many. Um, yeah, smoothly, it, I love how smoothly it trans, transit, you know, uh, how it transitions between the different levels of play. Very, very cool. It kind of makes the game feel, it, it makes the game feel more manageable, I think, if you can kind of, if you can kind of zoom out and just see it on a sort of more grand strategy level. Uh, you don't feel that you just, you you know, you have just got these millions of hexes. And I'll tell you what, it's an engineering feat to make a game like this with the amount of um, hexes that are in play. This is something Brad Waldell was talking about when we interviewed him, actually. Okay, so we can also put up another uh, asset in an improvement in Slepo 1. So here's a core world capital. We've got the supply depot up as well. Uh, so maybe a manufacturing building. And now we don't have much in the way of manufacturing stuff. We can get the colonial generator, though. Perhaps we put that one up here. So yeah, we're going to get a bunch of manufacturing. So that's going to be two there and three here. Yeah, let's put it here, look. Okay, so that's going to be three turns until that comes out. So let's carry on exploring. I probably should be getting more ships. What are we actually building here? Oh, we're building a supply ship still. Okay. Maybe we can rush that. Yep, let's do that. And we'll get another... Oh, no, we don't need another one. Mm. We've got a bunch of fighters that we can grab. Now, they've cha I believe that they've changed the combat system in the game now. This is what Brad was talking about. So I'm interested to see how the uh, combat system works. Let's get up one of these phantoms. Yeah, this is the one with missiles. So we'll get a phantom up. Okay, and uh, we'll hit the next turn. Okay, colonize planet Slepo 5. Yes, we're going to do that. So this is going to be a subsidiary planet, and it's going to give this one more food. Okay. Okay, yeah, to get more food, colonize new worlds or specialize the citizens into farmers. Yeah, this is this is becoming quite a complex game. And I like Rob from Explorminate, my colleague at Explorminate, was oh you know, he's the boss of Explorminate, but he was saying that he thinks this game like it's got the potential to be one of the best Space 4X games now. And I don't think he was I think he liked Galsiv 3, but I don't think he was he loved it, you know? Like I I loved Galsiv 3. I thought it was really good, but I think Rob was I think he thinks this one's a lot better. So I'm actually quite excited to see, you know, what what is new in this one. I didn't really play it a whole lot, I'll be honest with you, when during the beta. I had a cursory look and I kind of, I was a bit like, okay, this looks cool, but it's a little bit a little bit underbaked for me at the moment. Okay, Sauron May, Governor of Slipper 1, is speaking openly about our incompetence. Oh dear. Some of our more soft-hearted advisors suggest this is a normal part of a complex society, while others recommend we take a firm action against government and soft-hearted and soft -hearted advisors. Okay, we can increase lib liberty or authority. Cultural awareness in the to 4, minus 1 loyalty. Some time in the dungeon should fix this. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Put him in the dungeon. <laughs> Not like speaking out against me, mate. Yeah, okay, so we, that the loyalty was pretty low, so I think that was a good idea. All right. We've got an idle ship, which is this supply ship. Let's go and send this over to Slepio 1. And it's going to give it some manufacturing points to get some more buildings up. Uh, TAS Discovery Survey Report. We discovered a massive mine with the makings of precursor technology. We're fortunate it didn't trigger by our approach, though perhaps it was smart enough to detect that we weren't a threat. Uh, we should be able to collect it and adapt its key components to Betatron Collider into a device that can inflict heavy damage on an enemy fleet. Okay, sounds good. So uh, we've got one of these anomalies now. There we go. So we found an artifact, Betatron Collider, able to warp space with a beam capable of inflicting heavy damage on an entire enemy fleet. That's pretty cool. So we, that's just like a bonus effect that we can use. Okay. Let's get the uh, TAS discovery on survey, and we'll just carry on surveying these things because those are those are pretty good advantages. I feel like these these might be a little bit more meaningful than they were now than they were before. 
you know you tend to get like credits and you know little bits and pieces from those one from the from the artifacts before and there's so many of them i remember even Daz tactic kind of turned them off in his games or at least reduced the the amount of them so they you know I, and i remember feeling that they were a little bit over overdone you know too many of them more too many of them okay trade network or a garrison um that's going to increase resistance on the planet and this one's going to increase wealth Okay, let's get the trade network up. It definitely feels like money's a little bit easier to get in this one. Although, like I say, I am not totally sure whether that's just me, um, you know, just playing on an easier difficulty setting, basically. Which it very much, that very much might be the reason why that is happening. Okay, we've got some more cultural progression points. Wow, there's so many. Culture points, look. We can get intolerance, which gives us... Citizens no longer negatively react to being at war with their own species. Uh, we've got 50% homeworld influence and homeworld manufacturing. That might be quite good. Minus 15% decay from colonies. Okay, so what is decay? That's what I want to know. Okay, well, this is giving us our victory conditions. Hold on. What is decay, eh? Probably should have uh, checked out more of the the uh, tutorials. Okay, cultural progression, executive orders, data bank, that's the statistics. So, yeah, this is just your graphs for the game, basically. These these really really good fun to look at when you're uh, when you're getting further into the game. I'm not quite sure what decay means. I uh, can't see it anywhere. I'm not going to worry about it too much now. I'm sure I'll come across it later in the game. So, uh, but reducing it sounds like it's probably good. Okay, cultural progression. So, secrecy, plus five deception, um, and a trait for your leaders, plus one diplo diplomacy. See, I like diplomacy in this game. It's The Galactic Civilization series of games is one of the few Forex games, really, where you can... It's very viable to play in a in a peaceful way. And you can actually win by, you know, really not going to war very much. There's very few Forex games that do that well. Um, okay, kindness gives an approval bonus based on compassion, plus one diplomacy. Innovation, approval boost after discovering a new... Oh, we've already got that one. Plus three research after discovering an anomaly. That might be good. Let's, let's go deeper into innovation. Okay, we've got five culture points, so we need a little bit more to get deeper into the tree in somewhere else, in, in one of the other paths. All right, experimental technology. Tales from the corner of our empire dazzle and excite the people of our home world. Every detail of space life, colonial, tra uh, sorry, space travel, colonial life, and contact with aliens is endlessly fascinating to our uh, citizens. In particular, our discovery of evidence of ancient alien civilizations have inspired many to believe that our own worlds host the remains of crashed alien ships. Okay, we should search for them, or they'll be dangerous. And get more more authority or liberty. Um, let's go with more authority again. Where's yeah authority? Look, so author, we're actually gaining more authority. <laughs> Iron fist. When you whip a worker, it inspires immense productivity in him and any that witness the event. Yeah, okay. So you can you can kind of like you know you might be able to play as humans, but they're not you're not kind of hard coded into playing in a peaceful way. Like the the Galsib's got a really really nice way of developing your an organic way of kind of developing your civilization. It's not as detailed as Stellaris, but very few games are in that respect. Uh, I still think this is a better game than Stellaris personally. At least uh, Galsib Three was. Um, I find Stellaris's war simulation just really boring. And the leaders in Stellaris are kind of kind of suck as well. This is not very interesting. Okay, uh, keep, just tab through to the next turn. Let's see what we've got down here. Here's New Iconia. So this is the... Um, this one belongs to what are these guys called? The Iconians, of course. Uh, who are these? Altarian Republic. Okay. The Altarians have actually taken a planet down here. In fact, Altarians are expanding quite quick. Looks like um, 
the Aliconians were a little bit slow off the mark. That's interesting. They're going to have some border friction here. It'll be interesting to see if they go to war over that. Um, okay. Now, we're actually getting Gerontium every turn now, look. So we're getting um, 0.2 per turn, I think. Yeah, so every every uh, every five turns we're going to get Gerontium. I think that's right. Okay, press tab. So we've got an idle shipyard. Um, yeah, we'll get some more of these ships out, I think. Let's go for the Star Eagle. Little fighter ships. Um, so I'm probably going to go and get some more of these. I'll probably stick, keep these at Earth, actually. And just start building a, a little fleet here. Now, because even the Galsiv is a big game, and there's often a lot to manage. Because of the automation, um, you don't have to micromanage everything, right? And the turns go by relatively quick, so you can actually play this game quite quick, considering how big it is. So um, that's one thing, you know, I know some people kind of, look, this is a really manageable size of map. And, you know, yeah, you have got other sectors, but there's not going to be that many, right? So this is going to be a relatively short game, I think, for a 4X. Anyway, folks, I'm going to end the episode there. I hope you're enjoying this. It's, I don't know if I'm going to turn this into a series, as I said, but I just kind of wanted to play a little bit further and just see a little bit more of this. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think about Galaxy 4. Uh, do you like the look of the game and are you interested in buying it? Um, have you got any feedback for the developers? Thanks, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.